Hey, what's up guys? It's Phil. Welcome back to 3D Japan. And I've got something really cool in this box from, uh, as you can see, LDO Motors. But, uh, so, uh, you know, I go to the uh, 3D Printopia uh, every year and uh, I've, last time I saw something really freaking cool. It was these uh, printers that would, okay, they would print upside down. The build plate up here and the nozzle underneath it would go around and print on the bottom. And they were so cool and kind of small but have a surprisingly large build area. And they shrink down to fit inside one of these. I mean, now you normally wouldn't keep it in one of these because there are extra accessories, but you could technically fit it in one of these. So. This is the Positron printer, and I saw it, and I that that is the coolest thing. It looks so amazing, and I started looking into them, and I said, I have got to reach out and see if I can show one of these on the channel. Well, so I reached out to Nomad, who is uh, the, one of the creators of it, and he actually lives nearby here in Philly, and he was into it, and he said, okay, put me in touch with LDO Motors, they were into it. Uh, then they actually told me, okay, well, this is good, but it's going to be shipped to you from kb3d.com. That's one of their partners uh, there in Pennsylvania. So uh, I have to shout out to all of them. So um, let's see what's in the box. So here's the thing about this is this is not a printer that you're going to use as your first printer. First of all, it's $700. <laughs> Second of all, it's a kit. You're going to be building every part of it. Now they say they might have uh, some kits that are pre-built in the future, but not right now. Right now it's just a kit. Um, there are parts that you have to 3D print yourself or else have someone 3D print them for you. Uh, right now, I believe KB3D can uh, do the printing for you. Uh, LDO Motors might be able to and some of the other sellers. But okay, so let's look inside. So first of all, we have documents. <laughs> Take a look. I already took them out of there. Uh, next, we have a whole bunch of little boxes. So, this is uh, a bunch of parts in here. Okay, and there we have motors with wires, uh, the like little connectors. We have silica gel, which it says, um, do not eat. That's important. Don't eat the silica gel. Uh, let's see. Yep, that uh, looks to be another motor. Another motor. Okay, let's set that aside for now. Now, because this has to be put together, uh, this video is probably going to stretch out into several videos because uh, I've been told that this might take up to 10 hours to build and usually things take me longer to build than people say it will. Uh, another a little small box here. It says Motion, made by Olio Motors. Inside this one is some baggies and it is loaded with little tiny parts, uh, bearings, closer look. I don't want to take everything out so I'm so I might lose it but uh there we've got a uh, PTFE tube fittings uh, gears <laughs> done you you are putting together every little part of this that and more in here we have belts more washers um, 
screws. Looks like maybe these are some press fit parts. Um, more bearings. Um, more belts. This box says electronics. Hey, there's a whole lot of parts. Here's a circuit boards, wires, uh, more wires, a KP3D sticker, uh, more wires. Uh, another circuit board and more wires. Yeah. So that's mostly wires and small circuit boards in that one. Okay, this one says fasteners. So we've got big bag of zip ties, uh, some tools, screwdrivers. Teflon tube, silicon strip, um, springs, female standoffs. Um, this looks like, yeah, this is a tip for your soldering iron. You do need a soldering iron for this uh, because of the some of the heat set parts. So convenient, they include some tips for that. Uh, there's a bigger bag in here, it says fasteners kit. All right. That is a linear rail kit. So, yep, yeah, um, linear rails in there, in styrofoam. Yeah, more rails. Looks like we've got three of them in there. Okay, we have our glass heat bed. And be very careful with this. This is a very unique build plate. I can get it out. So this is a glass build plate that actually heats itself. So uh, you don't have uh, like a, a heat bed that you put your plate onto, the build plate itself heats up. Really interesting. Okay. Oh. Looks like we get a uh, silk cloth there for, for cleaning it. Finally, we got a uh, little Velcro or sticky pouch here bubble pack. Oh, that is our power cord. Okay, and then last, at the very bottom, you take the box away for this, we get a pelican case, or pelican style case. And uh, open that up. And take a look inside. We have three inch positron touch controller. So this will be our screen. Uh, we'll have to print a case for that. Here's the spot where the glass bed will go. Here are some parts. And we've got, uh, this is the bottom base of it. There's uh, some fairly sturdy metal. Okay. 
Okay, so, uh, yeah, so when you uh, get this completely finished, this is what you will really store it in. Uh, because we have things like this huge power brick that will not fit in a filament box. All right, uh, so let's uh, get everything set aside and I'm gonna start building it. <laughs> so here's uh, our next step uh, that I have to mention. Uh, that, like I said, you have to print some parts for it. And here are the parts that I printed. The problem I have is that I printed these in PLA and apparently you're not supposed to do that. So they really need to be printed in ABS. So I printed all of these for no reason. So I have no ABS. So I reached out to Polymaker and I said, hey, I'm working on this project. I'm making a video for it. Uh, we'll work together. And they said, yeah, sure. Um, you know, just to order, you know, pick whatever ABS you want. So forget these. <laughs> I was really excited about making uh, it in black and a really bright neon yellow. And so I looked at their website and I saw ABS, uh, I saw fluorescent yellow, and I said, that's perfect. So I went ahead and ordered it. And it arrived, I got the black, and I got fluorescent yellow, which is actually orange looking. There we go, that's, it looks very orange. Apparently when you hit it with black light, it glows bright fluorescent yellow. So uh, I was really trying to avoid using uh, orange and black because when you look at these printers online, almost all of them are either blue and black or orange and black. So I was trying to have something different and it's gonna look very similar, but it should be still fun. So let's see if we, maybe in the future I'll be able to incorporate some kind of black lights into it and we'll get my fluorescent yellow. So I've got all the prints printed up in ABS now. Uh, I've got all the black ones here and a lot of the orange ones. And some of these are very tiny. Um, but, let's look here, yep. Yep, so, some of those are very tiny. Um, these, uh, these all came out really nicely. I was very surprised. They were all printed on the Ender 3 V3, and I put a cardboard box all around it as an enclosure. But I've got these parts set aside separately here because these are going to be for our first step, and we're going to be putting together a separate motor, I believe. Uh, now, I've also got my soldering iron here because these uh, were going to need some heat set inserts, which I've never done before. So uh, let's give it a shot. Boy, all this uh, assembling of electronics makes me feel like I'm working at Cyberdyne on Skynet here. If you like this shirt, go to geeksoutfit.com. Use code PHIL25 to get 25% off. So let's uh, start uh, this uh, first part. I've got all the electronics, got my soldering iron. Let's go. All right, so I've got the uh, extruder finished. That is all of step one. 
uh, complete with uh, there's an end stop on there and uh, got a screw to tighten it. And so if we have a piece of uh, filament here, can stick it in and it might be a little bit bent right now. Oh, and then it comes out the other side and we can twist and it'll run through. Might have to work on tightening this <laughs> screw here. But, yep, so that is step one finished. And I have parts here ready for step two. And I'm going to keep on working. So uh, in the next video, I should have a good bit more done. And I'll show you what I've been working on with it. Now, as far as uh, building this kit, I found it's fairly simple actually the instructions are very easy to follow um there was uh let's see if i have it here yep yeah. uh there's this one bag uh says extruder kit uh, this is almost all of the parts you need to build the extruder uh, except for the printed ones of course um there were a couple of parts where the instructions said uh get this screw or whatever out of the fasteners kit which uh, is in this box. Um, but um, there were a couple other points where it just said it needs this screw. I didn't see it in here, so I had to go searching through all of the fasteners kit and basically all the other boxes until I found it. Uh, as far as the prints, um, it worked out pretty well overall. There were a couple of uh, holes in the prints that were like for screws or something that were just a little bit too tight. And so I had to have uh, these needle fly files here uh, that I just kind of worked it in and scraped away a little bit of the plastic. Uh, there's a Bowden coupler here, then that's supposed to fit snugly in this hole. And that Oh boy, it was, I was really scraping inside there. And the thing is, it was a little bit too wide for the files. So I ended up getting a, my rotary tool, like a Dremel, and kind of grinding away at it until eventually this fit pretty tightly. It's not quite flush like it's supposed to be, but I think it'll be all right. Okay, so uh, I'm going to keep building, and this is going to take a while. So if you want to get me a cup of coffee to work with, there's a... Uh, super thanks button down below under the video um but yeah anyway i'm gonna keep working um uh, be sure to subscribe to see the next chapter of this project and i'll see you next time